One of the countries that traded with Egypt was the island of Crete, lying just north of Egypt in the Mediterranean Sea. Crete was the land of the Minoans, the fabled people who were visited by Theseus, the Greek hero. He was helped by the Cretan princess Ariadne to kill the bull-headed Minotaur. Crete, blessed with adequate rain and lots of sunshine, was able to grow grapes, olives, and vegetables. Pastures supported goats and cattle. They hunted deer and boar for food. Like Egypt, Crete had an agricultural economy and could produce a surplus for export. Painted Minoan pottery has been found in Syria and Cyprus, as well as Egypt. Unlike Egypt, Crete was a relatively peaceful seafaring nation and apparently so confident in its sea power and large armed merchant fleet that its towns weren't fortified. Isn't it fact that in all Cretan art, no scene of war has yet been found? True. Palaces resembled storehouses more than fortresses. We can still see the huge pithy, or jars, used for storing wine and grain. There were palace settlements all over Crete. The most famous is Knossos. The palace followed a pattern similar to that of the temple complex in Sumer. Along with the houses of the nobles, it contained the administrative center, craftsmen's workshops, and religious shrines. It was built of stone, supported by wooden beams, and often covered by lime plaster. Called the Labrys, or House of the Double Axe, it also became known to the Greeks as the Labyrinth, after its intricate maze of corridors. Labyrinth is in our dictionaries today, meaning a maze or something involved and complex. This room, with its 3,000-year-old stone throne, still intact, is considered the oldest throne room in Europe. Scholars speculate that a queen or chief priestess sat on the throne. Perhaps Ariadne. The Minoans were expert engineers, too. Along with light wells that warmed or cooled the buildings depending on the season, they developed a sophisticated system of drains, as well as bathrooms with toilets that could be flushed with water. Minoan architects built houses with inner courtyards and light wells, a concept Europeans didn't utilize until 3,000 years later. As well as being good engineers, the Minoans created exquisite works of art. They painted the walls of their rooms and decorated their vases and furnishings with flowers, fish, animals, and trees. The people of the neighboring island of Thera had a distinct culture of their own, but were influenced by the Minoans, as you can see from their frescoes. All we know about the Minoan way of life is based on some elegant wall paintings, the artifacts, and architecture. Very little hard fact is known about them, as no one has yet deciphered their writing, called by scholars Linear A. The most famous example of Minoan writing is the Festus Disc, found in the Palace of Festus, still waiting to be translated. Looking at these paintings, you can see why both archaeologists and visitors to Knossos have been seduced by the slim, beautiful people in the murals. Men wore a kilt or loincloth. It was made of local wool or linen, possibly imported from Egypt. The outfit was completed by a tight girdle-like belt that exaggerated their slimness. The women wore a loose-fitting robe with a deep neck that exposed the breasts. Over this was fitted a gaily colored flounced skirt held in place by a tight corset-like belt. 
both men and women wore jewelry. According to some, Cretans saw the supreme being as a woman. She was associated with the horns of a bull and the double axe. She was the protector of crops, life and death forces, and could influence good and evil. Her snakes symbolize the underworld or possibly the earth from which life springs. From frescoes and murals of women taking part in social life openly, comfortably feasting and gossiping at public gatherings, and the absence of a dominant king figure, scholars conclude that women played major roles in the society. A matriarchy? Perhaps. The double axe, whose meaning we have already noted, was often connected with the bull and its worship. This veneration of the bull produced the most fascinating aspect of the Minoan culture, the spectacular bull-leaping ceremony. A youth, agile and graceful, somersaults over the bull's back after using the horns as leverage. A female assistant will catch him, while another girl with hands on the horns seemingly prepares to leap. From what we can see, their preoccupations did not include elaborate afterlife rituals. The body was simply folded into this sarcophagus and buried. Do you think they might have used it as a bathtub first? They seem a practical people, so why not? Unfortunately, the wealthy Minoan economy was coveted by others, and they were invaded by the more aggressive Mycenaeans from mainland Greece. From this great lion's gate at the fortress Acropolis of Mycenae may have come Mycenaeans to overwhelm the more peaceful Minoans. For some years their cultures mixed. Agamemnon, the Mycenaean general who fought in the Trojan War, even had Cretans in his army. What happened to the Minoans finally? We'll have to wait till the last program for that.